um, you know, all you have to do is scrunch it together and you have that very same image on the ring worn by a very famous figure in America today. You just bring that all together in an artistic representation and that's what you've got. Now, we're gonna continue on, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Now we go into the mark of the beast. Verse 13, verse nine, chapter 13, nine. If any man has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with a sword shall be killed with a sword. Here's the enduring patience and faith of the saints. Just understand that there, if you decide to take up an arm against the new world order, it doesn't matter if they have to nuke your house. They will do whatever it takes to kill you. If you live by the sword, you are going to be butchered by them. Okay? But he who leads into captivity is going to go into captivity as well. There is going to be justice in the end. Verse 11, then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the thir first beast who came before him, and he caused the earth and all those who dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. See, it's a government, a government whose deadly wound was healed. And out of the ashes, the phoenix of this, comes forth the new world order, the Novus Ordo Seclora. After the destruction of all ordered governments, out of the ashes arises the new world order. It says that he did great wonders and made fire to come down from heaven onto the earth in the sight of all men. He deceived all those who dwell on earth by means of the miracles which he had the power to do under the authority of the beast. He instructed all those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast which had a wound by the sword and yet lived. And then verse 15, the dragon lamb, as I've coined the phrase, dragon lamb, because he spoke like, he was a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. The dragon lamb had the power to give life to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. In verse 16, and the dragon lamb caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their forehead, so that no man might buy or sell except those who have the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding decipher the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is ki, ksi, sigma. It's the number of man, the number or mark, or the name of the beast is written in the ancient Greek text of the book of the Revelation as three characters, ki, xi, and sigma, not as the number 666, which is hexacosi, hexaconta, and hex. Hexacosi, hexaconta, hex is 666, but that's not how it's written in the ancient text. It's written in Greek characters, which you now look at on your screen. Ki, kisi, and sigma. Now, if, if, now John is looking at this. And the linguistic evidence is very strong that Yohanan wrote his revelation in the Hebrew language. Yet the Greek language has been embedded in the Galilee region for hundreds of years, and these characters would not have been unfamiliar to him. He's seeing something, but presuming that Yohanan saw these three Greek characters in the vision, we can simply rotate them 90 degrees. As you see in your screen now, rotating them 90 degrees to see their preeminence in these very figures in the modern Islamic Basmala. The Basmala is by far the most prolific artistic expression observed throughout the Muslim world. The Basmala is the artistic symbol which bears the acronym 
and this is the acronym, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Okay, first of all, that is an insult. Allah is fictitious. He is not most gracious because Yahovah is most gracious. Yahovah is most merciful. This is an absolute insult against the one true God. But John, John doesn't see Arabic. He sees these figures, and these are the figures that you see in this basmala. The key, okay, the key, which is now on its side. Now you see the X. Now you see the Kasi, which on its side looks like what, what we would think in a, a script W, but that is the representation of in the name of Allah. Uh, this squiggle, this squiggle, um, you know, all you have to do is scrunch it together and you have that very same image on the ring worn by a very famous figure in America today. You just bring that all together in an artistic representation, and that's what you've got. Today, this name of insult against the one true God is worn on the headbands and on the right arms of Islamic Jihad, holy war terrorist, as well as on the uniformed soldiers of Muslim armies who are sworn to the destruction of the nation Israel, the extermination of the Jewish people, and the slaughter of the Christians as well. See, John is seeing things in the future. And have we not arrived at the time or near the time where we are seeing these things play out? Now, there's also another very strong possibility here that everything that is sold, everything that is sold in bookstores must have on it, including the mystery of iniquity, sold in Christian bookstores all over the world. And a lot of the information that I'm sharing with you is in The Mystery of Iniquity. If you wanna review, this is the book to get. This is The Mystery of Iniquity. This details the legal prerequisites to the return of the Messiah. And on the back of it, we have a UPC code. The computers read this UPC code. It has three sets of of thin lines at the beginning, in the middle, and the end, separated by a medium space. The, the reader reads that as a six. It also reads the beginning number as a six, the middle as a six, and the end as a six. When you have those three numbers in place, six, 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 when it can read all three sixes, then it knows it has the entire code. That's why if it's a short version with two sixes together, it still sees six, six, six. So it reads this as a code. And so you cannot buy or sell in the marketplace now without this mark being on all merchandise that is sold. Now, what are we missing? We're missing the other part of it, which would be a mark on the right hand or in the forehead that would be your personal reader code. That then we could go to a completely cashless society because first of all, we are off the gold standard. There's no such thing as a gold standard because the world bankers have all the gold and in billions were, were looted from the world trade centers uh, and that was the last of major gold heist, and the biggest one, as far as we know of, in the history of planet Earth, was taking the, the World Trade Centers down, uh, right, uh, and they got just about all the gold out of there uh, before it happened. I think their timing was just a little bit off in one of the trucks and uh, in several of the, the escape vehicles uh, that was used uh, apparently in the looting as we, we get the information uh, was uh, trapped down in the building. But it is this very thing that, that would lead to a completely cashless society when they deliberately trash and crash every monetary system on the planet because everything is off the gold standard at this point. But I'll tell you, there's gonna be a fight to the finish for who really runs the new world order when it all comes down. We've got China, we've got Rome, we've got the United Nations. We've got them all in play and it is going to be one bloody mess.
Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.